welcome to Coffee Break Daydreams episode 5. Vlogcast. There's occasionally a, a podcast that I watch called The Astrology Podcast with Chris Brennan, who is uh, very scorpionic, and whenever he introduces his episodes, um, he always says, the astrology podcast, like this. So, anyway, get used to it. <laughs> um, so I've made a few notes again, and I'm hoping I can be helpful to you in discussing those things that I've been meditating on. Uh, I think it's my first job is to uh, do a kind of dream defrag. So... Uh, yesterday I got a cold and um, not very nice but in the dream that I then had that night um, I found myself you know dreaming similar scenario where um, yeah equally not very nice <laughs> but what I think is interesting there is that you know dreams tend to uh, mirror and reflect um, what you're already going through. I've got a question which came up which is, is dreaming regressive? Um, and I was talking in a group, there was about eight or nine of us sitting around and we were doing this kind of uh, sort of mixture of philosophy and <clears throat> you know, religion, that kind of stuff. And one of the questions that, that, that was prompted in that situation was, aren't, aren't dreams just like a spiritual cul-de-sac? Um, it's, you know, very easy to get lost in them. Um, you know, you might spend, you might spend a lot of your energy in, you might lose a lot of energy by dreaming. I think that's a concern. That's a, a valid concern. Um, but also I think it's it's important to try and remember the, the radical sense of uh, freedom, uh, liberation, excitement that can come up even even just by having uh, another another example of reality given to you. So no, I, I don't believe dreams are regressive. I think they are um, they're part of a an ongoing story um, you know there's there's chapters in life and sometimes a, a dream can serve as a a trigger for a new chapter or um, can help to bring closure to to you know other situations um, so what do you think The psychologist Carl Jung, who was prolific in the early 1920s, 1930s, um, he talked about the process of individuation, um, this being another name for the kind of New Age phrase, self-realisation. Um, and again, I think, you know, dreaming can really boost that, can really uh, up hold it and, and kind of honour that process. So by allowing uh, good dreams to, to influence one's, one's uh, worldview, um, I think that really does raise your, your ability to, to just, you know, function. Um, so I think, they're, I think they're necessary. I don't think they're just like an accidental, kind of emergent, random, um, curio of, of reality. I think they're, they're, they're more interesting than that and, and they talk about or they elucidate the process of becoming ensouled or you know in fully embodied in your life. Um, people say you know I'm living the dream and I think it's true to an extent that you can um, you can do that you can you can do that. Um, part of my uh, meditative discipline 
in this process that I'm sharing with you is to um, is to tease out the difference between working with my dreams and my dream life and um, relentlessly pursuing particular types of reality. Um, <clears throat> you know, as I was describing in uh, one of the previous videos, if if you place the power or the or the hope or the ambition or the dream, if you place it outside of yourself, then um, the internalization process, the the um, enlightening process that happens um, is is kind of blocked, is kind of gets stalled. So it's important for me to have this discipline just as a, a daily meditation. Um, when I was um, when I was eight or nine, I think I, I was um, basically I was quite a playful guy. Um, and when I got really excited, when I got re you know really engaged by building a treehouse or swinging from a treehouse or whatever it was, um, I would tend to talk too much. I tend to shout, and um, so part of the discipline is 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 in easing off on that and and just kind of allowing the good stuff to come in instead of sort of reaching out for it. Um, yeah, so that's. If that's any use to you, you know, um, I suppose the thing about dreaming is, again, is not to get too excited by how mag magnificent the the event is in the dream, because that will, um, although it'll help you remember, it might also snap you awake. Um, I'm only repeating what I've said before, really, there, but, um, you know, allowing exuberance and, and delight into your daily uh, way of being, <laughs> it has to be um, it has to be worked with. I think it wants to be worked with. Um, that energy, that 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 infinite wellspring of of you know life in the universe wants to find fruition. It wants to come into being. Um, so whatever process works for you, whether it's Dreaming, meditation, running, fishing, eating fish, uh, whatever, you know, just if it works for you, do it. Um, and uh, the last note today is um, I follow a bit of Chinese astrology and I know that we're about to go from the year of the tiger into the year of the rabbit. Um, and the rabbit is all about uh, kind of peacefulness, um, resilience in the face of difficulty and um, coziness and um, you know the safety of the Warren. So wherever you are in your in your friendship group or um, in your personal development, um, I hope that you find a place this year of um, you know, coziness and and uh, safety and security and family and um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so thank you for listening, and uh, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye.